Prince Andrew believes senior members of his family are denying him his birthright by continuing to oppose his return to duties. The issue exploded in dramatic fashion on Monday with the Duke barred from attending the public events at the Order of the Garter Ceremony at Windsor. Reports suggested the Duke of Cambridge, may have offered an ultimatum of him or me, ahead of the service at St. George's Chapel. The late decision was a fresh blow to the Duke as he is determined to assert what he believes to be his hereditary rights to return to royal life as soon as possible. He believes that he has now spent enough time away from the spotlight in the wake of the furore around his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein and his payout to Virginia Giffra. But despite support in his ambitions from his mother the Queen, Andrew had to take a back seat away from the public gaze on Monday. He was originally due to appear but after discussions between senior family members it was decided it would be best to restrict his attendance to the event's private lunch and ceremonial inside the castle. Reports suggested the Duke of Cambridge, may have offered an ultimatum of him or me, ahead of the service at St. George's Chapel. A family decision, was then made to shield the Duke from the public gaze, a royal source said, William hasn't worked out that with hereditary monarchy you either stand together or hang separately. They said the Queen and the Archbishop of Canterbury are aware of the need to keep Andrew involved as a working family member but that other senior royals do not agree. The Duke is thought to have challenged Monday's garter ceremony ban but to no avail. A source close to the Duke insisted that it was his own personal decision not to appear in public. However, Buckingham Palace rejected the claim, describing it as a family decision. The issue is causing a major headache for royal officials as the Queen is determined to support her eldest son. The Duke has been pushing Her Majesty for a return to royal duties and wants the Colonel C of the Grenadier Guards returned to him. She signalled her support for Andrew by arriving with him for the Duke of Edinburgh's memorial service in March. The father of two provided a steady arm for the Queen as she walked into Westminster Abbey to remember the life of her husband. Having been forced to pull out of the service of Thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations earlier this month after testing positive for coronavirus, the Duke was looking forward to the public appearance and considered a small step on the way to his return to some form of royal life. He did join the Queen and rest of his family for the investiture in the castle's garter throne room and the traditional lunch that takes place afterwards in the Waterloo Chamber. But neither he nor the Queen joined the public procession and church service featuring Prince William, the Prince of Wales and other senior royal. Andrew, who was pictured driving into the castle at around midday, remained behind the scenes. The heirs to the throne are said to have feared a backlash from the public if Andrew appeared. A senior source said, the Duke of Cambridge was adamant. If York insisted on taking part publicly, he would, a version of the order of service for the St. George's Chapel service named Andrew as being part of the Garter Knights while in another distributed to the public he was omitted. Joe Little, managing editor of Majesty magazine, said, clearly it was the intention he would be there, as he does feature in one of the lists, so it's not a media invention he was going to be there, until recently that was the intention. Interesting that the family should need to intervene on something like this and to pull him back but clearly that's what it takes. Mr. Little speculated the events of Garter Day may cause Andrew to reassess his future and how, impossible, it is for him to return as a working member of the royal family. When asked about the move to remove Andrew from public view, Mr. Little said, I think the decision they've made is a sensible one, I think they're fully aware of the public's opinion of the Duke of York's conduct and that this is very much a damage limitation exercise on behalf of senior members of his family. Andrew, who is a garter knight, was reportedly plotting the move as part of a royal return which would have seen him also attend Royal Ascot this week. A source said, he was confident and bullish he can make a comeback. Prince Andrew was set to appear at some Platinum Jubilee events earlier this month but caught COVID-19. The Queen's second son stepped away from public life after the furore over his friendship with paedophile billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew paid a reported £12 million to settle a civil sexual assault case brought by Virginia Giffray, who was trafficked by Epstein. She accused him of sexually assaulting her when she was 17. He denied the claims and does not accept any liability as part of the settlement but said he acknowledged Ms. Giffray had been a victim of abuse. The monarch, 96, did not take part in the procession of garter knights because of ongoing mobility issues, but she did attend a lunch after the service, as well as the investiture ceremony. Former Prime Minister Sir Tony Blair, the Duchess of Cornwall and Baroness Amos were installed as members of Britain's most prestigious Royal Order of Chivalry at the event.
Around 4,500 spectators within the castle walls watched the colorful procession of garter knight and ladies dressed in blue velvet mantles, red velvet hoods, black velvet hats and white ostrich plume. Protesters gathered outside in opposition to former Prime Minister Sir Tony Blair being appointed. Dozens of Stop the War activists held signs reading, Liar, outside the castle grounds in protest at Sir Tony's appointment. It was announced in December that the former Labour leader would be made a Knight Companion of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, the highest possible ranking. More than 1.5 million signatures were gathered on a petition calling for the knighthood to be rescinded, claiming he was the least deserving person of any public honor, and that he should be held accountable for war crimes. Sir Tony was Prime Minister during the Allied military invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan.